Hi, welcome to my podcast. My name is Amy Fillet, and today I'm going to discuss the story of Sarah Bartman and the larger issue of the exploitation and sexualization of Black women's bodies. This exploitation and sexualization of women creates a stereotype of what Black womanhood is and also functions to hold in place and support not only the control over Black women's bodies, but of the slave trade in of itself. As discussed by Lisa Gale Collins in her article, Historic Retrievals, Confronting Visual Evidence and the Imaging of Truth, Sarah Bartman was abused sexually and psychologically in the exploitation that she faced, being paraded around for Europeans to oogle at. She was called hot and taut Venus for its irony, meaning that Bartman was viewed as the exact opposite of the Roman goddess of love and beauty, Venus, and instead was thus perceived as the exact opposite of European ideals of beauty. Bartman's exploitation was part of not only the social sphere for the general public to gawk at her body, but she was exhibited as part of the scientific community as well. It was in this scientific community of ethnographic studies that illustrations of Bartman were commissioned and spread. The exploitation of Bartman and the characterization of her being inferior to Europeans perpetuated not only the sexualization of Black women's bodies, but it supported the notion that Black women were inferior to Europeans. The dispersal of images of Bartman's nude body and the sexual abuse she suffered relates to this larger concept of Black women's bodies not being their own, but being the subject of entitlement to the white gaze, specifically the white male gaze. In the dispersal of the prints, the drawings, and the paintings of Sarah Bartman's body, combined with the touring she was forced into, it perpetuates this ideology that Black women do not own their bodies, but that their bodies are open to gaze and sexualization by the white male gaze, both socially and scientifically. Now, in regards to the touring of Sarah Bartman's body around Europe, it is worth noting that while many people came to see her for amusement or shock value, not all people approved of the exploitation of Sarah Bartman. There's an article by Pamela Scully and Clifton Crace titled Race and Erasure, Sarah Bartman and Hendrick Caesars in Cape Town in London. It's in this article that the authors note that, quote, Caesar's display of Bartman particularly outraged some members of the anti-slavery lobby, including Zachary Macaulay of the African Institution. They disliked a Dutch settler keeping a cocoa woman in a state of bondage in a free England, exulting in its recent abolition of the slave trade, end quote. There's a sort of sad irony in the fact that the very place that Bartman was being exhibited at, which was England at the time, was considered a free state, which had just previously abolished the slave trade. While Bartman was not a slave in the traditional sense in a domestic or plantation sphere, she was directly affected by the attitudes of the slave trade in which Europeans felt they had a right to the use of bodies of Black people. Bartman's slavery was that of mental and sexual abuse and exploitation. It's in this nature of this form of exploitation that Bartman was subject to that Zachary Macaulay questioned in terms of her free will. And this opens up the larger issue of free will and agency and consent. According to the article by Pamela Scully and Clifton Crease, quote, Macaulay asked the attorney general to investigate whether Bartman displayed herself of her own free will or whether she was enslaved. According to the court paraphrase of the interview with Bartman, she said that she stayed in London to earn money. Although she was cold, she wanted to remain in England until it was time to return to the Cape." End quote. 
There is an issue here, however, with the concept of consent. Due to the power dynamic between Caesar and Bartman, it may be argued that Bartman was not even in a position wherein she could provide proper consent, considering the environment of sexual, mental, and physical abuse that she was under. In addressing how this ideology of Black women's bodies being not their own functions in relation to Black womanhood, the concept of voyeuristic tourism is very much relevant. In the exchanging and circulation of illustrations of not only Sarah Bartman's body, but of other African women, it is evident how this visual culture of the exploitation of Black women's bodies function to keep in place a stereotype about Black womanhood and specifically the sexualization of inferiority of Black women's bodies, particularly in relation to the white gaze. So bringing in some of the class materials we've looked at in the past week, we've looked at quite a few postcards and photography of African women. And these postcards and photography of African women in relation to this circulation of Black women's bodies for the white gaze is relevant in discussing this larger idea of voyeuristic tourism. Some of the postcards and photographic works, such as the postcard or Carte de Visite from about 1920 by an unknown photographer titled African Woman, exemplifies the spreading and the commodification of visuals of Black female nudity. Another example as discussed in class lecture is um, this postcard photograph by Edmund Fortier in about 1910 titled Senegal Woman. As evident from the woman's facial expression of suspicion and upset at having her photograph taken, we can see that there's both a lack of consent in these types of photographs and postcards, as well as the larger issue of the concept of exoticism for the titillation of the white male gaze. While female nudity has long been a defining element in what is considered high art, the nudity of Black women, particularly in these types of postcards and photographs, functions slightly differently. It functions slightly differently compared to white female nudity in that it has an added layer of exoticism for the sexual gratification of the white male gaze. It's in the ex exchange of these visuals, these postcards, these photographs of the black female nude that the ideology of the entitlement to black bodies is once again in function. So, Circling back to the narrative of Sarah Bartman specifically, it is evident how multiple racist ideologies of entitlement to Black bodies, the over-sexualization of the Black female body, and the issue of consent are at works. Something that is incredibly upsetting is the treatment of Sarah Bartman, not only during her lifetime, but even post-mortem. As discussed in class lecture, after Bartman had died, George Cuvier conducted a detailed dissection as well as even going as far to create a mold of her body. The body was then displayed in Paris until 1974. What is extremely upsetting in addition to this is that her body was not sent back to South Africa until 2018, more than two whole centuries after her death. This is incredibly disrespectful to further subjugate Bartman to even more exploitation, even after her life had ended. The legacy of Bartman is tainted then in this way, um, in the degree of exploitation, even after her lifetime had ended. So it is in this narrative of Sarah Bartman that it is evident how racist ideologies 
over the control of Black womanhood and Black bodies in general has interacted with not only the slave trade and cultural attitudes towards the Black community, but also the historic racism and exploitation of Black bodies in the scientific community of both the 19th and 20th centuries.